Good morning, Titans. Today is January 29th, and you're watching Senten News. I'm Soina. And I'm with the Vera. Zoink, Scoops, I haven't finished my volunteer hours for NHS yet. Well, the McKenney Animal Shelter needs volunteers. Alyssa gives us information for this volunteering opportunity. Hey, Titans. I'm sure many of you need to get service hours, whether it's for NHS or you just need 100 hours by the end of your senior year. One place that can help you is Collin County Animal Services that has many volunteers to help adopt out as many healthy animals as possible. I went to the shelter to see how the volunteers work with animals and interact with potential adopters. So the volunteer program here is primarily what does adoptions. Um, before the volunteer program started here, our adoption rate was really, really low. Uh, once the volunteer program got started, uh, our adoption rate is like 99.9% for adoptable animals. Um, we help in so many ways. One, we socialize cats and dogs like Simon and the kittens. Um, we have uh, Facebook pages and do a lot of social media and we work really hard on those to make the animals look happy and healthy and some, you know, we don't want people to adopt because it's a sad situation to have pity, we want people to come for their new best friend. Well, the adoption program as it is wouldn't exist without the volunteers. Um, there was not much of an adoption program from what I understand before um, the volunteer became involved with it. Um, so uh, it's a great asset to our community um, to be able to um, provide the, I guess, the service that we do um, and to our animals. I get um, great satisfaction. Like, um, I feel needed. I feel a sense of purpose since I've started here. When I started like three and a half years ago, I didn't know how involved I was going to become and everything I did I just felt this sense of satisfaction and, and inner happiness and so I do it for the animals but I also do it for me just as much probably and I think a lot of the people that really stick with volunteering here feel the same way they just get a great sense of satisfaction um, seeing you know an animal that was super shy come out of its shell and then go home to a loving home. You get to not only give back um, but you really make a profound difference in the lives of all the animals that we interact with and we have some amazing wonderful dogs and cats that come through um, that wouldn't have any chance without us um, and you so enrich the lives of the families that they're involved in that they're adopted into um, and we get pictures back from families that have adopted cats and dogs from us all the time um, just letting us know how um, how much better their lives are um, because we have helped them find new family members. Well, I hope you can help volunteer here or anywhere and help to better your community and the lives of people and animals alike. Also, check this story out on the website centennews.com. I'm Melissa Harmon with Centen News. Volunteer hours look great on a college application. And you need a college application to apply to UNC. Hey, how about that? A UNC branch is opening up in Frisco. Mitchell gives us more information. Hey Titans, deciding which college you want to go to can be a tough decision that you have to make. Many kids like to stay close to home because it's easier and much cheaper. The building I'm standing in is the new campus site for the University of North Texas, which is a very popular school for Frisco students. And now they have a much closer location here on Internet Boulevard. I talked to Miss Sims about this new campus and just exactly what's going to go on here. Well, we're going to teach collaborative, interactive, interdisciplinary courses. We're going to focus right now in four areas, gaming, sports management, marketing, merchandising, communication design, and cybersecurity, big data analytics, um, data science. So it's a, it's a uh, working outside the walls of the traditional university. And we're going to have interactive um, courses for students. We're going to have executives and residents here. It's going to be an exciting place for students to for, can learn in an interactive manner. Ms. Sims then explained to us the new technology that would be used at this campus, like TV monitors that can show multiple laptop screens at once. Displays, and you, you have to press it, right? New classrooms with more interactive technology. And wall monitors that tell if the classroom is occupied or not. One, we will be the only public four-year institution in Collin County we're the, and we're really excited about that. We also see a great opportunity with students like you from, from Frisco and an opportunity to um, bring education to this very exciting area where we have industry 
and where students can interact with people from industry. This is Mitchell Greger, Centen News. You know, with the UNT branch opening in Frisco, we have another cost-effective education opportunity. Falling gas prices is also helping us save money. Hey Titans, this is Michael Creighton with Cent10 News. I'm here at 7-Eleven talking about the gas prices and why it's such an anomaly here in the United States today. And we thought it needed some investigating. We talked to some students and teachers on their experiences and why the gas prices are so cheap. How are gas prices affecting your day to day? Gas prices are at a, at a good point for me right now. Um, back when it was $4 a gallon, back when it was $4 a gallon, I had to stop traveling and make other decisions because it's really expensive and it adds up. So a dollar something, we're happy about that. Okay, the fact that gas prices have come down is beneficial to most consumers because we're not having to spend as much to fill up. And most economists believe that the extra money that we save because we don't have to pay for the gas is going to go into other areas of the economy. And so I would say maybe people are going out to eat at restaurants more uh, and using that extra money. We also got a student perspective. I'm really happy because the gas prices are so low right now. I get to spend my money elsewhere and not filling up my truck so much and so often. Well, considering I just got a job and just got my license today, the gas prices being super low is really nice because now I get to spend my money on other things and like my friends and stuff. What is the cause of this anomaly? The United States has discovered a new way to get remaining oil out of the ground called fracking. So we've like gone way up in our oil production. The rest of the world is continuing to produce. Russia, Saudi Arabia, and other countries all need oil to fund their governments and the supply of oil has increased and around the world other countries that use oil for gas uh, their economies have slowed down so demand is slowing so if supply is greater than demand the price of the product is going to go down so that's what's happened. Oil's come down and now gas prices come because there's an oversupply of oil in the world. The Nasdaq has done a report on how cheap the gas prices are because the Middle East is flooding the market with oil. The last time gas prices were over $3.50 was August 13th, 2014. This is Micah Creighton, Send 10 News. You know what else is falling? Chipotle's reputation. Kristen has a scoop on Chipotle's health scare. In December, it was found that Chipotle Mexican Grill was causing some consumers to have E. coli, which can lead to serious illness. We talked to some of you about the scandal and looked further into Chipotle's involvement in over 50 cases of E. coli. What is your opinion of Chipotle? Uh, Chipotle's the bomb. I love Chipotle. It's one of my favorite places. Chipotle is great and it makes my stomach happy. Um, it's good and their burritos are good and their chicken is good. Did you know that Chipotle is causing E. coli outbreaks? Yes, I did know this and I avoided it for a little bit but when they said that everything was cleared up, I went back and I've been fine. I heard that it was causing Ebola outbreaks. No, e. coli. E. coli. Not e. coli. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked my mom if she could take me before they closed down and she said no. Uh, what do you know about E. coli? It'll make you die. That's it. <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. It's a bacteria found in food. What do you know about E. coli? Uh, not very much, admittedly. I know that it's a bacteria and that it can it spread through meat and it can make you really sick. That's about it. E. coli are bacteria found in the intestines of people and animals, but sometimes found in food, especially in raw meats. Most types of E. coli are actually harmless, but some can cause serious illness like pneumonia or kidney failure. The first case of a Chipotle's E. coli outbreak was November 14, 2015, and as of December, there have been a total of 53 cases across nine states, including New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, Illinois, Minnesota, Washington, Oregon, and California. The company has been under scrutiny from the media since the outbreak started, and now the CDC and the FDA are running investigations over Chipotle. In order to rebuild their reputation and get quality food back to their customers, the food chain will be closing all its locations on February 8th to train their employees about food safety. Stay safe and be mindful of what you eat. This is Kristen Espinosa, Centen News. Hey Titans, this is Zach with your sports update. Last week, freshman girls basketball won 47-24 against the Independence Knights. The junior varsity girls won 31-29 and varsity girls won 54-36. The boys also took on the Knights last week, with varsity boys winning 55-37. to 
On Tuesday, the Lady Titans swept the Lone Star Rangers with the freshmen winning 40-7, JV winning 30-25, and the varsity winning 57-51. The varsity boys also took home the win with a score of 61-47 with Jonathan Washington scoring 26 points and Mason Smith scoring 20 points. Come out tonight to watch the Titans take on Wakeland here with the girls varsity starting at 6 and the boys varsity starting at 7.30. Last Friday, the girls soccer team took on the Wakeland Wolverines with the boys losing 1-0 and the girls losing 3-2. On Tuesday, the boys soccer won 4-0 against the Frisco Raccoons with Austin Day scoring two of the four goals. Now here's Robbie featuring the new softball coach. Hey Titans, we've recently added a familiar face to the softball team. We talked to her to see how she's enjoying this year at Centennial. My first job ever was here, my very first job. I was the assistant softball coach and assistant volleyball coach. Um, and then I left here to go be the head softball coach at JJ Pierce. And then I took a couple other stops along the way. And then when this job came back open, um, it was appealing to me because I wanted to keep the tradition going. My coaching goals more than anything are to be a good role model. I want to bring positive energy every day to practice. Um, I want to be someone for them that they, when I was their age, a coach that I would have wanted. I've always had some leadership personalities in me and when I was very little, instead of playing Barbies, I would play um, school and I would pretend to be the teacher. So it's just always something I've wanted to do. Reporting for Sin 10 News, I'm Robbie Alexander. Congratulations to the debate team for winning their first sweepstakes of the year. Also, congratulations for Prachi for receiving second place in oratory and for Gary for receiving first in Congress. Before we close, a reminder that course registrations will be due soon. Juniors are due on February 4th and 5th. Sophomores are due on February 8th and 9th. And freshmen are due on 10th and 11th. And the red-off shirts will be available next week in the school store in A Hall. Proceeds benefiting the American Heart Association. We have a new club around campus called Future Lawyers of America. First meeting is before school, February 4th. That's all, Titans. Have a great weekend.